I might the, 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 the coronavirus part. pandemic is raging, but hope is growing. The end is in sight. Right now, these government experts are deciding whether to approve the Pfizer vaccine. They're scrutinizing the company's data for any red flags or oversights. If approved, the first shots could begin within a matter of days for healthcare workers and people in nursing homes. And doctors say cases will keep climbing as the post Thanksgiving surge has led to widespread infections and record setting deaths and hospitalizations. We'll have Florida's alarming new numbers for you in a few minutes. News 4 Jax has several reporters covering new updates on the pandemic and the vaccine. We begin with consumer investigator Lauren Verno. And Lauren, what's happened so far with the FDA? So Mary, this has been a very long and thorough meeting. They've been going at this for about eight hours now and they are still going. They did not even take a lunch break, but you have to understand they are working very hard to make sure they are being nitty and gritty with every single detail, especially when you look at the details that came out of the UK uh, just yesterday that there were two allergic reactions to the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Now they're saying there's investigations into it. That is something being up for discuss. There's also discussion of whether a pregnant mother can have this vaccine. Can anyone under 16 have that? That is the questions that they're asking Pfizer right now. But in the end, it comes down to, does the benefit outweigh the risk? Today, we will be considering whether to make available to millions of Americans an as yet investigational vaccine that has been developed, tested, and reviewed in record time. We will have a single question for the committee to vote on. The question is based on the totality of scientific evidence available. Do the benefits of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine outweigh its risks for use in individuals 16 years of age and older? Let's first start with what Pfizer had to prove to get this emergency use authorization. Address an agent that causes life-threatening diseases or conditions, which is COVID-19. There must be reason to believe the medical product may be effective to prevent, diagnose, or treat the disease or condition. The vaccine was proven to be 95% effective. The benefits of the product must outweigh the risk. The most common side effects were fatigue, headaches, and body aches from the vaccine, lasting about one day with no serious reported issues. There should be no adequate product already approved and available for diagnosing, preventing, or treating the disease or condition. Pfizer is the first company to get this authorization. And with the FDA's go-ahead, Pfizer says it will start shipping out vaccines from its Michigan facility in the next 24 hours to 600 locations across the country, including UF Health Jacksonville. But before the vaccine can be administered, the CDC's advisory committee must recommend the vaccine. The committee has scheduled emergency meetings on Friday and Sunday. We have been asked often, how can this be done in a year or less, when the process normally takes many years? Well, vaccine development or anything else in a pandemic setting is not normal. I just checked back into the meeting. They said they have a little bit of discussion left to go, and then they will go into that vote. Again, there is a lot of information to unpack here. So coming up at 6, I'm going to go into more detail on how the vaccine trials affected different age groups and ethnicities, as well as what the vice president of Pfizer said when asked about those two allergic reactions to healthcare workers in the U.K. Tom, back to you.